Okay everyone, I think it's time to try another repair video. I've done a number of these and haven't released any um, because I usually can't be bothered to do exactly what I'm doing now which is filming and you know fixing. Um, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna do any more of my tripod um, repairs where I record as I'm doing it. Um, it just gets in the way and I spend too much time talking. So instead I think I'm gonna try just doing a kind of problem statement solve solution thing. Um, so what I have here is a a pole position. Um, it's a very large board set and uh, this game will not run with my tiny little thin wire here. Uh, this is like 22 gauge wire and I've yet to I, I haven't bothered to upgrade this at all so um, my normal switching which is like a standard HAP controls um, switching power supply uh, just can't get enough voltage down the line through these crappy little wires to get the power needed for this game um, this game is pretty picky I, I've I found that you need at least maybe about 4.3 volts or so um, to get this game started, and once it's started, I think it can go down to like 4.1 before it dies. But you know, you, you need almost five, five point or 4.5 volts just to get this thing started. Um, so you don't have this. This game is not going to run. So what I've had to do is I have this uh, beefy 20 amp um, power supply here, and uh, I have it set for 8 amps, and you can see I'm drawing 7.4 amps. This thing takes a lot of power. Um, yeah, it takes a lot of power. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, it's not quite you know true because, like I said, I have this tiny little gauge wire and it's burning up a lot of heat in these tiny little wires. So if if you see that, I need seven and a half volts just to get five volts at this board because of all the the cable drop. But you know it is what it is, and I, I can't be bothered to make a better harness. This thing works. So. Um, Anyways, this is what I got. It's nothing. Um, if you've ever seen this before, I'm sure you have, if you've uh, tried working in a pole position. Um, this is a really... This is pretty much what happens when a game first starts up. So I feel like I shut this off, and you turn it on. This is usually like the very first screen you'll see, and then it'll start going doing its thing. Um, sometimes you won't see this at all because it's so fast. This screen here is basically whatever's in RAM for the video board. Um, the one thing I've kind of grown to like about this game, and you, you learn this from just working on a lot of boards, the, this test, like these pictures that you see when you start on a game, they tell you something about where you are like in a failure. So right now this tells me that my uh, I'm not I'm not booting at all. There's nothing going on. This board is effectively dead. Um, you can pretty much just plug in the um, video board, and this is what you're going to get. This is this is nothing on the CPU board. Um, and and from previous repairs that I've done in pole position, um, the boot chain I've mostly figured out. I would love somebody to like write this down, you know, and actually verify all of it. But from what I know so far. This thing boots up using the sound microprocessor, which is a Z80. That's the very first thing it does. Um, I think the second thing it does is it looks for inputs. I could be wrong. It either does the input test or the sound test next. I think it's the sound test where it actually tries to talk to the 4-bit um, sound processor, which is a Namco custom chip. I think it's this guy right there. It's a 50, 52, 55, so it's a 52XX um, ASIC from Namco. Uh, uh, so it goes uh, Z80 sound processor, then it checks this guy. Um, I think it boots up maybe this one next. This is a Z8002, and then it boots up the other Z8002, and then it checks the inputs, and it does a lot of stuff. But um, I'm still learning, I'm still trying to figure out if... Uh, what the order is, but I, for the most part, I, I have a decent grasp on it. So this is telling me that nothing's happening at all, and because the very first thing is is the sound processor, 
um, I know the look there. Um, and an another thing with this circuit that's a little bit bizarre, well, it's not really bizarre, but because there's battery backup that's usually here, um, there's this whole like switching circuit that makes sure that the CMOS battery, which uh, CMOS is like the memory, like it, it makes sure the battery's okay and it figures out if it should pull power off from the battery or for, should it take it from main system power. And um, that can actually be a big problem because like you can see this board's a little chewed up and that's because the battery leaked all over it and this is the best that I could clean from it with uh, vinegar and um, what usually happens is it like eats up every everything and um, in this case let me move my, my ground clip out of the way it usually eats off these transistors and all these resistors and stuff and also it eats up like this chip here and if you lose this you're pretty fucked um, I think you might be able to get some like someone to burn it for you, like hobby ROMs. I, I have never actually looked. I have no idea if you can get this replaced. I always just end up pulling them off of uh, other dead boards, um, and then it sometimes chews up uh, the Z80. So if you have a, a pole position and it looks a lot like this, um, check check like everything here and make sure nothing fell off or isn't chewed up and you know acid damage because that's what will happen. Um, but now that I got that out of the way, I've already, uh, I've already tested these guys and uh, I'm pretty sure this thing works. I haven't actually tested it, but it's, it's out of a batch of, uh, new RAM chips that I bought. Um, this is a, this is a tested known Z80. So I know like all this stuff works. These are all clean and I'm pretty sure they're working. I haven't tested them. Um, so everything should be good. But what's happening is again, this is, this is nothing. And if I take my, um... Let me turn on that. If I take my, my oscilloscope and probe on, like, the memory chip, there's stuff happening. Um, I don't really care what it looks like, but you, you can see there's, there's stuff happening. Let's turn that to, like, something usable. Yeah. So some, something's happening. I, I don't know. I don't really care. But what's interesting, if you look at the schematic for this thing, um... Jeez, I just realized I'm doing exactly what I said I wasn't going to do. Uh, I can't help it. Um, if you look at the schematic for the sound microprocessor, again, this is like the very first thing that boots. Um, you can see the EEPROMs and the uh, the RAM here. Um, and this part here, those control the, the EEPROMs for reading. I haven't even bothered to check this yet because what I found often is... Um, Especially because again, it it you know the batteries eat up everything. Um, the naval pins for the RAM, CMOS RAM CS here. Uh, you need this to be able to do like anything because it that's what it uses to turn on this chip. Um, if that's not working, you're not going to get anywhere. And like I was saying about how it it checks the battery and figures out where it's going. That's this circuit right here. This is the RAM battery backup power. Um, so if we can get this damn thing to focus. So the battery comes in here, and this is where the battery is usually attached. It's across here, and this is set up to basically power the circuit. But you know, I haven't really quite figured it all out. But not allow the system to write to RAM when in, when it's on battery. If that makes any sense. So it can write to RAM if there's power, but it won't let battery or won't let the system write to RAM if it's on battery um, and that's how it does the high score save and stuff like that and uh, this stuff always just gets chewed up by the battery acid so if this doesn't work you're not going to get anywhere and it's a deceptively simple cir circuit so pretty much all you do is you just check everything and um, I've already verified that this uh, this thing is not doing anything at all See if I can get it on the right pin. Sorry, right here. I'm trying to do this like. Okay, that's the enable pin. It's not doing anything, so it's not working. So that's what I'm gonna try to figure out. Is uh, quickly just run through this and see if it's you know working right. Okay, 
I made some progress. Um, here's what I had to do. Um, look in here, I had to replace, uh, let's see if I have something to point with. Mm, good enough. Um, I had to replace this high C, which is a 30, um, it's actually, they call it a, uh, MPS 92, but it, you can put a 3906 in. Um, it's close enough. Um, this resistor was bad. Well, it was just broke. Uh, that's a 22K resistor. Um, these two resistors were broke. They were supposed to be 1Ks. I didn't have any more. So 1.5Ks. It's good enough. Um, and that's actually all I had to do. Oh, I'm sorry. I also, this chip here which I, I had to steal off another board. Uh, however, the socket was already there, um, and I just didn't, I, again, lazy quickness, um, I didn't look at the back of the board at all, and when I turned it over, it looked like shit. I mean, it was solder bridge, like crazy. Um, well, I shouldn't say that crazy. I think there was only one pin that was uh, solder bridge, but for most of them were just uh, the, like dry. There was almost no solder in in most of the holes. Um, so whoever tried soldering this did an absolutely abysmal job. Um, so soldered that in and uh, that actually didn't make a difference. Didn't help here at all. Um, replacing all of these things got me here. Uh, but that being said, if I didn't catch this, um, I would, I, you know, this wouldn't have really made much of a difference at all. So uh, next, is figuring out what RAM 8 is and I actually don't remember what that is off the top of my head so I gotta look at the manual and uh, I'll report back okay so more progress um, what ended up happening was I missed one resistor um, the one right here was busted and that was making it so it couldn't turn this chip on. Um, so this chip is RAM 8. So once that was cleared up and then this started booting. But what's really weird is right now it says RAM 73. It's saying RAM 73. Um, the manual doesn't have a chip named RAM 73. That's not one that's listed as a possible error and I've never seen this before. Um, and also what's interesting is if I restart it, it sits on the dead screen for a long while, uh, like two or three minutes before it pops up with with uh, RAM 73. Um, I gotta do some research to figure out what the hell RAM 73 is. Um, there's a RAM 7, and I'm wondering if it's that, plus some garbage, because uh, that happens sometimes, but otherwise, I, I don't know. So, um, yep, back to the internet for research. Okay, huge improvement. Uh, it's working. Um, RAM 73 does not exist in the manual. It has also never been published on Clav or any website that I can find a solution to it. Um... Yeah, there's no posting online for your error 73 uh, or what it is or whatever. Um, so no one solved it. Not even Dick Milligan had a, an answer for that error message. Um, I really need to fix this edge connector. This is something that happens a lot with my, uh, my game because I'm down to one edge connector and I've beaten the hell out of it. So it doesn't work very well. But, uh, so it's causing some, <laughs> some graphical glitches, but, um, anyways, um, th this is working, I know it's working, um, I'll double, triple check right before I put this away, but, um, anyways, so yeah, no one's ever solved it, uh, I don't know why, I got really lucky, <sighs> um, and I found a post online with someone bitching about a error message that doesn't make sense, um, you know, it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but the person was kind enough to mention the order that things happen to boot and uh, how they screw things up. 
which was really helpful and uh, the post said that after the sound processor starts up and it does its check with this guy it boots um, this chip and then this chip uh, and what I found out was this guy here it doesn't really look that bad I mean it looks different but it doesn't look that bad there's not a lot of corrosion on it or anything like that but um, it was really hot like a lot hotter than this to the touch um, which I mean doesn't mean anything at all and by the way this is the same exact chip just looks different but it, it, the other one was a lot hotter but that doesn't really mean anything at all um, but I just thought you know maybe maybe something with that so I took my working board over there yeah it's a mess I took my working board um, which is you know it's really great to have a working board set to go off of at all times that's really fantastic um, that's part of the reason why uh, I don't have a pole position cabinet working anymore because that is my working pole position board I have sold all of my other ones so I'm down to one and it happened to be my personal one but yeah circumstances circumstances I, I needed it uh, especially for this because you know these this chips really rare and really expensive to get it's a real pain um, because it pretty much was only used in this game and nothing else. Not like there's nothing else uses it. If you go on Wikipedia and you look up the Z8002, like this is the only thing that's used. So it, it makes it really hard to get these. So uh, having these on hand is difficult, and having them working is even worse. But um, yeah, this is what this is what gives uh, the RAM 73 error, and I, I am ecstatic because, like I said, no one has posted online what that means. So, uh, I'm, I'm flipping happy, um, this is mostly working, there's some graphical glitches going on, but see, it's, it's back in again, and I could probably bump the connector to get it to go out, but, um, I am going to quickly double check this, and I'm going to call this, uh, this fixed, thanks guys.